I'm Dugan with Scenery Solutions and Fusion Fiber. Today we're going to show you a, a very quick and easy method using the Fusion Fiber to build scenery, whether you do, you do model railroading, uh, just diorama building, uh, just any crafts and hobbies if it's a school project, uh, the, the old volcano that uh, everybody did in school. Fusion Fiber is a great product to use to build all of that. Fusion fiber is a cotton-based material. It uh, is recycled cotton. Uh, we have it just in a white color. It has a uh, powdered adhesive already mixed into it. All you do is mix it with water and you can tint it with uh, simple acrylic hobby paints to create whatever uh, ground color you want to work with. It's super lightweight. It doesn't chip. It doesn't crack. So it's a lot easier uh, to work with in the plaster methods. Um, plus you have a lot of work time. You have eight to ten hours of work time with it so you're not rushed at all. You can take your time. As you can see here I've got most of my material um, out here at my ready so that once I get started I can keep going. Uh, this is a training module that's, that I'm um, building for the Topeka Model Railroaders Club and we'll be making several videos, uh, a video series doing different things. Uh, today's a quick one on fusion fiber. We will be adding to it in the future doing water, uh, some static grass, and some other things. But today we just want to show you how easy it is to use the fusion fiber. Uh, I've got a, a small container here that I've got uh, about an inch of warm water in, and we're just going to start adding uh, the paint. Now, the uh, Topeka Club actually uses a color in latex, so you can use a lot of different uh, uh, colors, uh, different paints. Latex, however, um, once it sets up, the latex rubber in it uh, does not leave the material rehydratable. Uh, and that's one of the benefits to fusion fiber is uh, there is no waste because if you mix it with acrylic paints, it leaves it rehydratable. So if you mix up too much, put your lid on a container and you can keep it for several months. I've had some six months. If it's a little dry, just add warm water uh, back to it and it'll come back to life. But uh, all you do is, is uh, get your water and start adding your paint until you get the, the uh, desired darkness that, uh, that you're looking for. And just get that stirred in good. And I think this is about the, uh, the color that we use. And then I'm just going to start adding the, the uh, fusion fiber. And it's about 50-50, uh, so if you use a cup of water, you'll approximately use a cup of uh, material. And you'll just put it in there and start stirring it in. Now I'm going to have to add a lot more than that. I've probably got about three to four cups of water. Just kind of break it up, loosen it up as you put it in there. And just stir it in. Now it doesn't take any special tools. I use these little artist palettes. Uh, I believe I got these at a hobby store, craft store. Um, you can use putty knife, uh, butter knife. You can use your fingers, whatever works uh, the easiest and best for you. It doesn't take anything special. And we're looking for a, uh, a stiff, kind of a, a stiff oatmeal, uh, breakfast oatmeal consistency, if you will. Uh, you want all the uh, water absorbed. So as you're mixing it, if you can see a little water in the bottom, um, you want to add a little bit more product. And if you get too much fusion fiber in it, just add just a little bit more water if you like. And if you're mixing it and you don't think the, uh, the tent is as dark as you want, doesn't hurt to add a little more, more uh, paint to it. And like I say, you can use a lot of different paints. Uh, acrylics work the best, uh, leave it workable in the future. Uh, latex is just fine.
The latex, once it does set up, though, the latex, uh, it, it's, it's basically waterproof at that point. And the only thing you want to do there is just make sure you don't mix up more than what you're using in a weekend. It's very clean. If I was working with plaster, we'd have white powder all over the place and, and we'd have a mess and it would probably already be set up on me. So this is much easier to work with than plaster or sculpt -a mold for that matter. It, it has plaster in it and it uh, works the same way. You have a little bit longer set time but it still sets fairly fast on you. Okay, this is uh, looking pretty good. Uh, when you mix it up, you want to give it about 10-15 uh, minutes uh, set time. That activates all the adhesive and lets all the uh, all of your paint tents soak into the fibers. Get it a nice uh, even coloration. So we're going to let that set, and uh, we'll talk about the uh, talk about some of the things we're going to go over. Um, I like to use a lot of foams. Foams is lightweight. It's easy to shape. It's easy to form, and it's easy to work with. The uh, and I use uh, mostly uh, insulation board, the pink and blue. Now it does have a, a fairly smooth um, surface. You want to make sure that you peel that skin off to begin with, but then also uh, where anything's flat, uh, like this top part is here. Fusion fiber will stick to it, but when it's super slick like that, you'll use way too much product. You'll put more on than you need just to get it to stay. So I like I use a lot of different tools in forming my foams, but primarily these rasps work the best, and it's it's nothing hard. All you gotta do is, is just go over the top and just get you a little bit of texture. Now in my shop I have vacuum hoses, and I just hold a, the vacuum hose in one hand and and rasp it and it's nice and clean it, it uh, doesn't make a big mess. So on the plaster or on the um, on the uh, foam board just make sure that you rough that up a little bit. One other thing you can do if you've got a big flat area you want a super flat field um, the um, um, fiber tape that you get for drywall it comes in many different sizes and widths and things has a sticky side on it so you can put that right over the foam board sticky side down and then that will give you enough texture that that will grab your fusion fiber and you won't put too much. I just rather rough it up it's it's a little quicker and I don't have to mess with that unless I have a big flat area. Um, wire uh, cutters and all kinds of things work on on the uh, foams. You can see here this is still pretty smooth. This was just some of the rough end um, when I shaped it. Over here where we're going to cover you can see it's it's pretty rough. I've kind of used the file and the rasp and got it somewhat to the shape that we, we want to end up with. Uh, we'll use fusion fiber to to finish that up. Some of the other things you can do with fusion fiber is on backdrops. Uh, this is the backdrop for this unit. And as you can see, I've done clouds, uh, didn't put any tint with the product, just left it white, put them right up there, and then um, when they dried, I came back with an airbrush and added some gray undertones to give them a little bit of depth. The other thing you'll see here is I, I uh, added some mountains. I first spray painted some of the darker mountains to the back, overshadowed that with just a little bit of white overspray with, a, with an airbrush, and then added a darker green in the tinted fusion fiber, tinted in an evergreen color, and just made my mountains. And there wasn't, uh, I just kind of went with what I had here and went off of that. When I was uh, done, I did add a little bit of dark green texture. Uh, I blew it up on the, the mountains just so it had a little bit of a texture. And then again, once that was dry, I came back with a little bit of white overshadow. So. Don't overlook fusion fiber on, on uh, 3D effects for uh, backgrounds. It makes, makes wonderful backgrounds. Okay, now that our uh, fusion fiber is set for the uh, 15 minutes to uh, absorb all the uh, paint and, and uh, water and, and get the uh, 
glue activated, we're ready to start. And uh, again, uh, I like using foams, but you can go over anything as long as it's porous. So you can go over woods, uh, plaster cloth, uh, the steel window screen, uh, cardboard if you basket weave cardboard. But uh, we're primarily using foam and, and the uh, plywood here. And all you're going to do once you get it uh, mixed up is just start spreading it out over uh, your base. And it doesn't, uh, doesn't have to be thick at all, just as thin as you can go uh, with covering your material. You can texture it some if you want. Um, or you can just put it on, you know, as, as smooth as you want. And there's there's no special techniques to it at all. Just like I said earlier, whatever tools you happen to have. I like these uh, little artist palette uh, kind of tools, but um, putty knives, uh, any anything that that will work to spread it. And just work it down. You can see we've already done a uh, tunnel uh, here that's going to be off of a, a roadway tunnel. And it's probably kind of hard to see there, but we've done this previously and we've actually used the fusion fiber. We built this as a unit before it was glued in and we did the, the inside of the tunnel with the fusion fiber and scattered a little rock texture on that so the inside of your tunnels. Uh, can be done very easily with fusion fiber and I have a very realistic uh, look and especially on uh, tunnels for uh, railroads if you want a uh, removable tunnel so that if you have a derailment or problem it's super lightweight so you can actually cover the inside of those tunnels and uh, have an area that you can remove and get into that tunnel and uh, Keeps it lightweight, doesn't chip, doesn't crack, so moving it uh, doesn't cause any problems. And it, it works very well with uh, stopping and starting. As you can see, this I'd done in an earlier time, and this is going to blend in very nicely with that. So uh, stopping and starting with fusion fiber is very easy. Fusion fiber, uh, like I said earlier, has the adhesive already in it. So once we get this spread and covered, then we'll start adding all of our textures. And uh, then you can really see how it, it uh, basically comes to life and, and makes it look very realistic. And you can see here with the uh, with the foam, uh, you don't have to be perfect with how you want it because you can use the fusion fiber to fill up any gaps, or use those gaps and make you know little um, you know, like cave entrances or that kind of thing. Uh, whatever look you're going for in your mountain, a little crevice where maybe a a deer or bear or something's going to be setting. We may add, may add a deer to this a little later. You can kind of see back in there, there's a hole where we didn't get it all filled with foam and that's, that's fine. It doesn't need to be. And you'll use a little more product, but you know, if that's something you didn't get covered with the foam. It'll be alright. You can use a fusion fiber to bridge that, cover it up.
at one of the shows, somebody said, well, you're not making it exactly perfect, are you? And no, I'm, I'm not. It's Nature's not perfect uh, when you go look at it, so you don't have to worry about what you're doing and worry that you're making it perfect or not perfect. Actually, the less perfect you make it, the better it looks, because we know that uh, in nature it's, it's not perfect. And we're going to have the, the roads already kind of started here. You can see coming over the bridge, it's going to come down around the front of the mountain. You can do this as fast or as slow as you want. Remember that the uh, fusion fiber has a long work time with it. You're not rushed like you are with plaster. You'll have um, eight to ten hours easily to work with this. If you mix it up today and you've still got some left at the end of the day, put a lid on it, bring, come back tomorrow and uh, you should be good to go. If it's a little stiff, just uh, add a little bit of water to it until you get it back to the consistency that you like to work with. Where we're doing the road, it doesn't have to be thick at all. Smooth it down. Okay, we're done with that, that first uh, batch we mixed up. This is a dry sample of, um, of what we're going for. As you can see, this is paper thin. Uh, it doesn't have to go on very thick. But uh, once you get it uh, spread out like I've done there, we're going to start adding some textures. You add two or three layers of textures, whatever colors you want. Um, the, the small rock will go right on, we'll show you. Uh, but then once that's completely dry, this is basically what you have. All the textures, all the colors are uh, stuck to it, and uh, it looks, looks very real, very realistic. So we'll go ahead and, and start adding some things. Now, remember this is a module for a club, so there's modules that will hook on to either side. So they have some pretty standardized colors that they like to work with. Uh, we're going to go down first with this uh, kind of an earth color texture. And these are just fine textured foams. And you can do 
whatever you like. I typically will add two or three colors just to uh, give it some good depth and, and uh, make it look good. Just depends on the, the look you're going for. Now if you have have some up on a, a side uh, mountain like that that you can't shake it on, just put it in your hand and just lightly uh, blow it up there. It'll, it'll stick to it. And then we're going to add some green, some of the grass color. And again, there's there's no no mistakes or no right or wrong way here. Just whatever the the look you're after, as much or as little. And there's all kinds of of textures. Uh, the static grass has become real popular, and uh, we will be adding some static grass to this. Somewhere down the road, we'll have uh, part of the video series on static grass. And static grass is the only thing that I don't add to the fusion fiber as it's wet. I kind of feel that the um, moisture tends to kill the static electricity on the static grass, so. I will uh, let this completely dry um, and then come back with a spray adhesive or a, uh, a brushable thin down white adhesive to add to static grass and we'll, we'll cover that at another time. Okay, we, I mentioned the uh, road going down through here. I'll show you how we're, we're going to add that. We, I've just got a mixture of some uh, small gravel here that, that I want for the road. And you're just going to scatter that right on top of the fusion fiber. And I've kind of flattened the, the road base out where I, that's going to go. And just scatter that down. Okay, once I have that on there, then what I will do is use this little wallpaper roller and uh, just roll that over that fusion fiber, just kind of push that, that rock gravel right down into it and a little bit will stick on the wheel, it's alright, it'll wash off. And just press it down there and make, make your road bed. Pretty much an instant road. Now we're going to add some uh, some bigger textures for for bushes and that kind of thing. And, and there's all kinds of of uh, colors. This is kind of a sage color. Um, and again, that's just uh, whatever you prefer. Now what I did there, uh, I have a quart of, uh, of wet water that I've mixed up. Uh, we sell a wet water solution. Uh, called super wet that works really good. You can also do the same thing with just a couple of drops of uh, uh, dishwashing soap and all that does is break the surface tension of the water so it soaks in and just doesn't blow everything away. But uh, the bigger pieces of foam just kind of get them wet in your hand and then you're just going to place them wherever you want them. And just kind of work them into the material down into the fusion fiber. They don't have to be buried. Just making contact with it basically. We're going to put a bunch back in this corner back here. Kind of an overgrown corner in the mountain. And again, I'll, I'll use two or three different colors of, of uh, material and different textures. Nothing's all the same. So you want some different looks. Just kind of push that back in there. It's 
some up here on the side. There's a lot of, of uh, neat uh, vine type uh, products uh, that we have that would look you know really good to hang some vines down off in that corner. Okay, earlier I mentioned something about putting a deer in there, so we've got a little, little deer figure. We're just going to put him right up there, just kind of push him down in that fusion fiber. Sitting there eating some brush. Now we'll take our uh, sill floor tufts, and these are available in a lot of different colors, a lot of different lengths. Uh, they have some that are more of a weed type look with a lot of different colors in them. All you do is take those tufts and just kind of push them down in there. Again, make sure they're getting contact with the fiber. Okay, now you can keep going, you can add as much or as little as you want, it just again depends on the type of scene that you're looking for. Um, I think in the future, like I mentioned before, we will come back and add some static grass which will really uh, look nice and, and give some more vegetation to that. But uh, once you get um, all of your, your uh, textures on there, uh, your, your bigger foams, again, wet those in your hand, get them wet, push them in. Bigger rocks, if you're placing some bigger rocks, get them a little wet uh, just so that they're not super dry and push them into your material a little bit. Once you get everything on there, then you're just going to lightly mist it with your wet water. And all that's doing is all that foam material, rock, textures, um, it's just getting all that material wet so that the adhesive that is in the fusion fiber then will wick up into all of the materials and then when it's dry everything uh, is held in place and it will be like that little sample I showed you there earlier. Now at this point um, if you have trees ready and you want to place some trees, especially if you're working with the uh, foam underground or the foam base, just uh, get your trees. That's why I like to use the awl and just poke a nice hole down in with that awl. Take your tree. Down in there. Kind of close up your fusion fiber around it. I hope that's wood. If you're going right on plywood to do this, you're going to have to have a drill and drill a hole. But if you're on foam, you can just poke it right down into the foam. So we'll go up here. Um, Now you can always come back and add the trees later. Um, just drop a, a drop of wet uh, white blue down in there. We'll put it on up here on top. Okay, once we've got our trees placed in it and uh, we've got it all sprayed, if you've got everything on there, now you just let it dry, and it'll take 24 to 36 hours to completely hard shell dry depending on your heat and humidity in the room but uh, hopefully we've shown you how easy it is to build scenery using the fusion fiber material and, and a lot of our other products 
join us again. We will be doing more videos. We'll do some water. Uh, we'll probably go more in depth with the fusion fiber. This was just basically to show you how easy it is uh, to do scenery. It's not intimidating at all. Uh, it just takes a little bit of imagination and the right products. Uh, please uh, visit our website, uh, scenerymadeeasy.com, and take a look at uh, what everything we have to offer to make building scenery easy and beautiful and, and look natural. Thank you.